So you build or bought your first computer, congrats. But what now? Most computer doesn't have a DVD drive anymore. So how do you install an operating system or drivers? So today we're going to talk about that need to be done after building the computer. My name is Kalapos and for all of you who see this video and have more tips and tricks or suggestions, I'd really appreciate it if you leave it down in the comments below. Maybe we'll make a follow-up video with more tips and tricks and stuff like that. Before everything, one of the things that I always forget about is to turn on the PSU switch. So before you dismantle all of the PC, please make sure that you don't have this problem and turn it back on. Make sure you also connect the DisplayPort or HDMI cable and better, better yet, for the first years, use an HDMI cable because if you don't have any drivers on your uh, PC, then the DisplayPort won't have, wouldn't be able to pass through the native ones. But more important than both of them, please connect them to the GPU and not the motherboard. To get into the BIOS, we'll turn on the computer and press Dell quickly until we see the BIOS screen. From there, we'll run XMP for Intel or Expo DOCP for AMD. This is basically overclocking for your RAM or rather allows your RAM to run at the, at the proper speed that you paid probably a nice chunk of money for it. Which also reminds me, I really hope that you got an even number of sticks because the performance of two channels instead of one channel is much better. And if you want us to make a video to go deep dive into that subject, let me know in the comments and we'll do that for you. Next, we're going to install the operating system. All you need is a USB drive that has at least eight gigabytes of RAM and another computer that has an operating system installed on it to prepare the image. In order to make the bootable USB drive, we'll go into this site, which of course I'll put all of the links in the description down below, so you wouldn't have to go and look for it, and download the tool for creating installation media for Windows 10 or 11, whichever one you prefer. Run the program and connect the USB drive to the computer. Know that everything you have on the drive is going to be deleted, so I recommend that you don't have anything other than that external drive connected to your computer, so you don't accidentally format anything else. From there, it's quite simple. Just choose the version that you want to install and next, 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 next. Until the process ends successfully. And that's it. We have a drive for Windows installation. We're going to connect the drive into the computer on which we want to install the operating system and turn it on. If the computer doesn't enter the installation screen on its own, press Dell during the reboot process and select Discon key in the boot menu from the BIOS. Now it's a little bit different between every motherboard, so a quick Google search should help you, but if you, if you find yourself that you have any troubles with that, please write down in the comments down below and we'll gladly help you. Towards the end of the installation, you will get a several options to choose from. I personally mark no on all of them, I turn them all off. I recommend that you basically read what you're going to accept, but please be careful on what you're agreeing on. Basically, it's a, it has a lot to do with commercials and um, uh, tracking you and stuff like that. I'm not looking to receive any of those notifications any more than I have to. After you have installed Windows, you should delete all of the unnecessary programs that installed on the computer, like games and other nonsense that Windows pushes on us for absolutely no reason. We will open the add and remove programs from the settings or from the start menu. This section is more important for those of you who buy a pre-built laptop or a computer. These are really overwhelmed with unnecessary bloatware uh, from the manufacturing company. So delete everything basically. <laughs> we need to download the latest drivers and I'm not just talking about your video cards of course. And I get that not everybody is going to want to mess with the BIOS and such. But in many cases it's worth updating the BIOS and it's not really complicated either. Just go into the manufacturer website of the motherboard company, look for the specific model, go to the support page or download and you will find it over there. You will have all of the drivers, firmware that your motherboard has beyond the BIOS. Many of those updates can provide critical support, like in the case that you just finished installing your PC and your computer doesn't have internet even though you plugged the LAN in. So you go over there and then you need to download the LAN drivers. Next thing we're going to do is to update Windows. I know it sounds ridiculous because we just finished installing the, the latest version, but unfortunately this is not quite how it works. So you'd probably have to restart your computer several times uh, with those updates until you're done with them. Just hit on the start menu and press update and then just check for updates. Check that your screen is set to the correct resolution and refresh rate. This may sound like something very basic, but you wouldn't understand how many times we've encountered this problem in all of our socials. So by clicking on the right mouse button, you enter the, the window display settings and select resolution and refresh rate for, you want from there. If you don't see the resolution or refresh rate, make sure you're connected the DisplayPort or HDMI to the GPU and not the motherboard. 
Now we're going to do stability testing for your computer. Yes, I know it's not the most fun thing to do, but after all, it's something that you do only once and to make sure that you're really going to get the most performance that you paid so much money for. So it's not really that hard and the easiest way is just to download Cinebench to test the processor. Don't worry, it's free and of course everything again will be down in the description. We will also download Unigen Super Precision tool to check the performance of the video card. And we will also download a software called Hover In for 64 that will let us see the temperature of different components such as the processor and the GPU card. In general, we want to see after a few runs that we don't reach too high of a temperature and that our result is reproducible in all runs and compared to relatively same hardware as others. The results can be seen inside of the app or of course in the website of the company. Again, all the links and everything will be downstairs in the description. And that's the basics of everything you need to do after you buy or install your brand new PC. Hope you enjoyed this and learned something. My name was Kalapas again. Hope you have a great day. Good day.